But uh, I have the pleasure today to uh, welcome in this uh, community call, the May community call, uh, uh, if I may, dear colleague by now, because we have been uh, collaborating <laughs> exactly. for three years now, uh, Philippa Pereira from uh, uh, the Foundation of Science and Technology in Portugal. And uh, Philippa will be sharing with us uh, the work that we've been doing and how they approached as a funding agency, how they approached uh, the DMP, and what were the, uh, you know, the questions that they that they had, and uh, how we eventually created the template for them, how it works now with the uh, national funded projects. So, Filippa, thank you very much for um, uh, accepting our invitation. The floor is yours. Okay, okay. So, uh, first of all, good afternoon to you all. Uh, I would like to thank uh, also Ellie and the Open Air for, for the invitation. As Ellie referred, my name is uh, Filipa Pereira, and I am a research data manager at the Foundation for Science and Technology, more specifically at uh, FCCN, that is uh, their scientific computing unit. So uh, today, basically, I will take you uh, the opportunity to guide you through the implementation process of our data management plan system, which is based precisely on, on Argos. So very briefly, and to provide you with some context, uh, FCT is the, the Portuguese public agency that funds and supports science, technology, and innovation in all the, the scientific domains. It is uh, under the responsibility of the, the Ministry of Science, Technology and Higher Education and uh, as, as main objectives to establish Portugal as a global reference in the supported areas and also to ensure that the funded research contributes to the society and also to the economic uh, growth. So SCCN uh, is the scientific unit of FCT it has at the moment six uh, technological areas, as you can check in the in the slide that I'm showing. And one of these areas, that is the last one that is referred there, the, the knowledge area, is in fact the area that integrates the main activities, resources, and also the services that are related with uh, open, open science. Sorry. So we have um, basically a, a set of services that support uh, publications covering uh, the three open access routes uh, from gold, diamond, and green access. We have also recently launched a, a service related to journals in the repositories directory. Uh, Crosswide, we have uh, our national CRIS system and also open educational resources. But the service that uh, I would like to highlight today in this presentation is uh, the one that is related, in fact, with uh, research data management, and it, it is um, named as uh, Pollen. So it's the, the Pollen Initiative. So the, the main objective of this initiative is to promote open science in what concerns research uh, data. Uh, for this initiative, we uh, established four important pillars, and um, these pillars are interrelated. So we have first the definition and implementation of research data management policies. Uh, very important uh, in the second place, we have the implementation of services and infrastructures uh, in order to allow the community to practice open science. We also promote uh, communication and training activities to support engagement and the awareness near the, the community. And finally, uh, whenever possible, we are uh, always aligned with different projects and initiatives. Uh, and I can give you here some examples, such as the uh, European Open Science Cloud, uh, Science Europe, and uh, uh, obviously the European Commission. So. For this, that we are approaching, uh, I would like to to cover the the two first pillars. So concerning the the governance, uh, FCT launched already in two thousand and fourteen a research data management and sharing policy, uh, which actually consists in a set of uh, recommendations. So the DMP submission is recommended as uh, a good RDM practice. 
Um, in the meanwhile, uh, considering the, the the context and uh, the all the initiatives that we can face uh, regarding open science, FCT through FCCN has been working on a revised policy, and this policy has clear principles and requirements. So it is expected that this policy will be launched very soon. Um, nevertheless, I would like just to share very briefly with you uh, some of the principles and also some of the requirements. So the first principle is in fact uh, to ensure that uh, there's open access to research data in accordance to the premise, as we all know, of the as open as possible, as close as necessary. Also, that the fact that uh, the research data management should be considered as an obligation of the, the grant recipients. And finally, that data should be managed uh, according to the FAIR principles. So, um, for this presentation, I selected uh, two requirements. The first one uh, is related with the submission of the DMP. And according to this uh, new policy, this submission should uh, occur in the first six months of, uh, of the, the date of the grant. And also we have another important uh, requirement that will be the, the deposit of data in a, a trusted repository. In order to, to ensure that the community is able to accomplish the requirements of the, the new policy, we have been working in, uh, in two services that complement each other. So the, the first one is in fact uh, the one that is uh, based on this presentation, the, the data management plan system that is based on Argos and that allows the community to, to prepare and submit the, the DMPs in accordance with uh, the, the FCT's model. And the other service is, is in fact um, a data repository, a long tail a service that will cover all the scientific uh, disciplines and uh, will uh, enable the researchers to, to deposit their data uh, in the situations that they do not have uh, an alternative uh, solution. So just one second, okay. So I was going to, to start explaining uh, and present uh, the analysis and the work that was carried out to, to select and to implement the, the DMP system. So back in 2020, so three years ago, as Heli mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, uh, with the support of uh, University of Minho, uh, it was prepared an analysis and a technical report on the existing tools to prepare DMP. So the main objective was in fact to to evaluate what were the available tools uh, that we could select, to assess the compliance with FCT's requirements, and also to sustain the decision of what was considered or what will be considered as the best option for our national service. So uh, we analyzed a, a total of nine tools uh, that are represented here in the, in the slide. And we cover in detail several items, including the description of the services, also the openness of the, um, the software, the extension of the community of users. Uh, we were also very focused on the use, the existing use cases, um, the possibility and uh, the flexibility to integrate uh, funders' models, uh, the available technical uh, support, uh, also very important in terms of national service sustainability of, um, of the service and also evaluate obviously the potential adoption. So after this uh, first approach, we were able to, to reduce uh, the, the overall selection to uh, a number of four services. And there we performed even a more detailed analysis more in terms of uh, specific uh, functionalities and also uh, requirements. So the solution and um, the work that was in fact performed help us to internally discuss and decide uh, what will be our best solution. And in fact, we selected Argos 
uh, in a, a cloud service. And why did we select Argos? So basically, uh, we valued uh, a set of uh, characteristics that we consider very useful for national service. So the fact that Argos integrates information on projects and grants via open air for us is uh, very important. Uh, it is in fact a very flexible tool which um, accommodates the requirements of uh, both institutions and funders. It has a good usability and uh, allows working uh, in collaboration. It enables the creation of uh, machine actionable and readable uh, DMPs. It is generic, so for us it was very important because uh, we could easily integrate different uh, scientific domains. It is part of the European Open Science Cloud Services, promotes the FAIR principles, and also we uh, found very interesting that it covers the, the complete cycle, including publication and sharing, namely through uh, Zenodo. So we, uh, in parallel, also perform an analysis and selection of the DMP templates that FCT would use and uh, that should be included uh, in Argos. So we opted for uh, a widely known template, uh, which is the Science Europe score requirements template. Um, we also exchanged some thoughts with uh, NWO and uh, we introduced some changes. But basically, the main information of our template uh, is uh, from uh, the Science Europe template uh, and is included, in fact, in uh, their practical guide to the international alignment of RDM, which includes guidance for both researchers and reviewers, information that we also consider when uh, integrated uh, the model in, in Argos. So basically, the template focuses on six topics. Um, I, I, I think that most of the participants in, in the call probably already know this template, but very briefly, I just remind you that this uh, six topics includes uh, the data that is generated and or reused, the documentation and metadata that accompany the data, also, um, some questions regarding storage and backup aspects, uh, how the ownership will be managed, which data will be shared and preserved in the, the long term, and finally, also uh, the resource planning and management or responsibilities that are uh, related with, uh, with data management. So we work very, very closely with, uh, with the Argos team that includes Ellie, George and uh, Dimitris. And the idea was in fact to try to customize some uh, functionalities to uh, personalize our national service. So uh, conjointly again with the Argos team and the University of Minho, we included a Portuguese version, uh, namely in what concerns the system's front end. So basically the index, the messages, and some of the content were translated to, to Portuguese. Uh, we also translated the, the user guide manual. So we have all the detailed information in Portuguese also to support some of our research community. Uh, the FCT template was analyzed in detail with, uh, with the Argos team, and we check uh, each set of questions, uh, we inserted the guidance to the researchers, we decided which answer should be and shouldn't be mandatory, uh, we evaluated, the, um, for instance, the best answer formats, uh, as well as the respective the dependencies between questions, and very important, uh, something that is also a key factor in Argos, uh, we selected as much as possible APIs uh, to assist in preparation of the, the DMP and also already in mind to sustain the evaluation of the, um, the information. So the template uh, was then integrated into the system and we also were able to integrate both in Portuguese 
and English version. So we know that uh, our community uh, obviously include uh, Portuguese researchers, but uh, also from another country. So for us, it was really important to have uh, these, these two versions of the, the template. So in terms of APIs, uh, I selected here some, some examples. So we, we consider, for instance, the, the selection of, of researchers. So we are very easily able to select the researcher with their identifier, also the organizations. Uh, in terms of uh, the funding organization, we also are able to select uh, FCT in this case. And when selecting FCT, we are able to access the, the respective set of grants. So this is also a very easy work to do with, uh, with our researchers. And uh, I had here also uh, an example that is related to a, a question in this case uh, with metadata uh, uh, standards where uh, the, the person that is uh, preparing the, the, the DMP can select very easily from the, the drop-down list the, the possible uh, standard or even if uh, it's not applicable it's uh, possible to introduce it manually. Another important factor that we consider was also to integrate uh, with the Research Data Alliance DMP common standards in order also to ensure the actionability of the, the plans. So once the new policy was not yet launched, uh, we still at the moment don't have a significant number of DMP submitted. Uh, but I would like to share with you uh, a, a very recent case of, regarding the, the data repository that we are implementing. So we are now entering in its uh, pilot phase and we launched a call near the community and one of the requirements to to be able to to make a proposal was in fact to prepare a dmp and uh, we asked uh, the candidates to prepare a dmp based on fct model and also using argos and the experience uh, i believe it was very positive we practically did not have any issues reported or major doubts on how to use the tool. And we were also very uh, positively um, uh, impacted because in fact, the, the DMPs that were prepared were very detailed and we were able to, to verify that the model works well and also the tool works very well. So in terms of next steps, um, we uh, are constantly organizing uh, communication sessions, not only re related with the DMP, but also with the general best practices of research data management. Uh, we have a training plan, so we have been uh, doing some specific events on specific institutions showing the, the, the DMP model and also Argos uh, tool. We are constantly uh, trying to follow up Argos new functionalities and something that is very important for us is also related with possible integrations. And finally, and regarding more uh, uh, our internal process, we are starting to implement a monitoring and compliance system. So this is uh, the presentation that I have for you today, and I'm open to uh, questions that you might have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Philippa. Uh, thank you for this uh, nice uh, overview of uh, what's happening in Portugal. Uh, and also, um, you know, highlighting uh, the the areas that you found at least uh, useful um, when looking at creating a DMP with Argos. Uh, there is actually a question. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Uh, from Angela, when does this new research data management policy is expected to be implemented or published? 
Well, uh, it has been a, a challenge uh, for us because uh, we, in fact, have uh, the policy already revised more than one year ago. Uh, we had internally some some changes and we had an additional challenge because, in fact, we look at data and also to publications as two important pillars for open science. And it was decided, in fact, to uh, launch uh, two policies, one revision of the RDM policy and also one revision of the, the open access to publication policy. The fact is that uh, FCT also adhered to, to Plan S and uh, it was uh, considered like a priority to revise the, the policy to, to publications. But we intend to, to launch both policies practically at the same time. So we are planning to have also the initiative from open access to publications revised and approved in order for us to launch our own policy. I would like not to uh, refer any specific date because it's it's really difficult, but uh, I'm positive and I think that uh, we might be able to launch the policy uh, still this year. That's excellent. Uh, thank you, thank you, Philippa. Another uh, question by Sylvia. For the open access data, is there any control on journal quality? Yes, we are going to, to start gradually. So um, we know that this uh, policy will have a big impact near the community. So we want to implement the policy in a gradual way. So first, we are going to support the community with these services and present the requirements. Uh, and we will ensure that requires are, requirements are being met. And in the second phase, we are going to start evaluating data. So it's not the first step. It should be, but uh, according to the, the number of projects that we will have and to the impact of this uh, new policy, we know that this is something that it's not quite realistic. So first, we are going to um, to bet uh, uh, on work performed in the submission of the MPs, and the next step will be to evaluate, in fact, the data. Thank you very much uh, for this answer, Philippa. Any other question? Please feel free to uh, raise your hand and uh, pose the question using your microphone, if you want. I have here also a slide with, uh, with my contact. So if not in this call, if anyone wants to, to clarify something, please feel free to, to raise your questions. Okay. There's no, no problem. Mm -hmm. We also have a question from Julia in the meeting's notes. I don't know if Julia wants to open the microphone and raise the question. Okay, hello. Um, Hello. I'm uh, wondering if um, by um, discussing with other funders uh, um, and uh, discussing like uh, alignment in Europe, for instance, with uh, Science Europe, mm -hmm. uh, do you find uh, any challenges or uh, any other things uh, that uh, um, in Portugal you found more important or less important? Yes, what I can uh, tell you by the experience that we have until now, uh, we know that uh, research data management is a, a very important pillar, but in terms of uh, maturity near the community, I think that we still have uh, uh, a lot of work to do. Uh, we are uh, aware that we will need, in fact, to uh, raise awareness near the community. I think this is one of the most important steps and uh, it's included in our, for instance, communication uh, sessions and also trying to provide some training. Uh, and we, we 
want to um, clarify that the, the fact that preparing a DMP, it's not uh, an art task or there is something that it's only requested by the funder and something to complicate the, the research funding. It's not the case. And uh, our role here is also to uh, raise the awareness that I already mentioned and uh, try to show that, in fact, there's a, a very high benefit for the research teams in order to, to practice uh, this, uh, this task. Uh, we had the opportunity near uh, other countries, uh, namely, we, we participated, for instance, in uh, EOSC Synergy, is a, a project related to the European Open Science Cloud, and we exchanged some information and we were in fact able to evaluate the maturity that I already mentioned before. And um, we know that we are not the only country that needs to perform this type of, uh, of um, supervision and uh, trying to give the support and necessary support near the community. But we know that is a challenge and uh, we need to um, evoke some change in the mindset and uh, highlight the benefits of these best practices. Thank you, Philippa. There is another question by Yeni. Thank mm -hmm. you for the interesting presentation. I understand that you implemented the Portuguese template in collaboration with Argus. Are you able to provide additional guidance, text, links, example, tailored information about storage to storage infrastructure at different institutions? Is the template you developed now available to everyone? Yes, yes, it is, in fact. So this was one of the, the steps that we performed when uh, working with uh, with the Argos team. So uh, right now, if you access to, to Argos, you can select uh, FCT's templates in Portuguese or in the English version, and uh, you will be able to see uh, the set of questions according to the six topics that we discussed uh, previously. And it's really easy also to, to see the type of answers that are requested, if they are mandatory, uh, if they have the APIs reference that uh, we mentioned also. So this information is, uh, is available in FCT's templates. Nevertheless, if uh, you need more detailed information, just let me know. Uh, you, you have my contact and uh, we can uh, obviously provide more detail if necessary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to, um, I think I understand the question. Um, so this, this collaboration with the FCCN from FCT, uh, was for them to use the Argos Online, uh, the service that Opener offers, to create a template. There was uh, not in. There was not. There was no. Uh, let's say instance of the software that uh, Argos is based on um, to do the storage to storage infrastructure that you say to different institutions. But I see that we have in the audience uh, one, I think I saw one somewhere, who has um, deployed Argos and can possibly uh, also cover this part of the question. Hello, Juan, can you hear us? No. Cannot hear us. Okay, but uh, maybe it's uh, we can uh, we can follow up uh, on that. Uh, yeah, no. uh, that's no problem. Th thank you very much, uh, Philip, for, for the answer. Um, any other questions? Uh, I know that some of you. Um, might have um, in your plans to use uh, a specific tool. Um, are there any questions? Are the questions that you would like to pose to Philippa as one of the, uh, let's say, um, 
interested party <laughs> that 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 um, wanted to that tried to to understand how uh, they can implement uh, RDM policy. We have a question from from Moshka. Ah, okay. Are in our meeting notes. Yes, uh, uh, Moshka. The, mm -hmm. If Moshka wants to to open the microphone. Please feel free, everyone, to open the microphones to pose the question. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, I enjoyed your presentation very much. Uh, very Thank informative. <laughs> we are getting ready for something similar. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering, so if um, researchers are already using uh, the template in Slovenia, um, they are slow in adopting whatever is connected with research data. So did they find uh, the template easy or they had any remarks? Um, I know that researchers uh, want to have everything super easy. <laughs> so it's true. <laughs> Google easy, you know, you just type something. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Moshka. Um, according to our experience, um, we had a, a, a good addition to, to the template. So the, the template is based on, on Science Europe's uh, topics, but we were able also with the support from, from Ellie to detail more in depth the, the, the topics. So we have, it's not a considerable, but uh, we, we can say it's a very complete DMP. And I confess that uh, at the beginning, I, I was afraid that uh, that uh, could be uh, a big project for our researchers. But uh, in fact, we were able to also uh, settle a lot of questions uh, with drop-down menus that, that is quite easy for the, the person that is preparing the, the DMP. And according to, to the experience and the feedback that we are getting, uh, there are no complaints about uh, filling in the, the template. Uh, we try to simplify the maximum, but also uh, we kept in mind that we need a, a lot of information. So we had to find a, a balance uh, between these two options. Uh, but the experience, it's positive. And um, as I al also had the, the opportunity to mention on the presentation. We had very recently the submission of several DMPs related to the, the pilot phase of the other service that we have. And we were very surprised because the, the DMPs are quite complete. Even some of the, the questions that are not mandatory, uh, the researchers try to, to fill in as much as possible. And uh, we, we had also some feedback that um, some of the questions, and we know that's one of the, the main objectives, some of the questions raise some, some, some planning, some uh, uh, work that needed to be discussed internally uh, within the, the research team, because there were some, I, I don't know, for instance, related with the uh, needed resources, some things that uh, uh, researchers do not tend to um, estimate at the beginning of the project. So this template gives, gave some, some guidance. Uh, talking about guidance, we uh, near each question added, in fact, uh, some texts, some links uh, to information in order also to simplify uh, the preparation of the EMP. And last, uh, we are also involving the, the research supporting staff. So not only specifically the researchers, but all the staff that is uh, within the, the, the team in order to clarify as much as possible the, the template. So these are some advices that uh, we, we can uh, contribute. But please feel free to, if you want to discuss further, uh, I'll be quite happy to, to give you more detail and share more of our experience, Moshka. Uh, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. It's very inspirational. And also congratulations to FCT and Ellie. <laughs> yes, Argus yes. Team. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and the team was yeah. wonderful, really. A big, big support. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have other questions? Maybe that I don't see uh, here, Andre. 
No, in the meeting notes. We don't have more additional questions. Anyone else that is in the same situation, um, you know, building policies and finding tools would like to ask something to Philippa? Now that we have her here. Hi, good afternoon. Can I, can I? Please. One? Sure. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you very much for your presentation, Philippa. Uh, it was uh, very intuitive and, and informative. Um, I'm part of the supportive uh, team for mm -hmm. the science and technology management of our research center. And uh, I was wondering if you can show us the template or where can we find it? I have one from the FC, FC team, but I don't know if... It, is the one <laughs> so sure. i can i think that i have argos already open yeah so, thank you so basically just let me take here this so i'm going to sign in i'm already signing um so i can we can we cannot see the screen. We see the screen oh, okay, okay. of the presentation only, yes. So I'm going to share again. Can you already see it? Yeah. Yes. So very, very briefly, I, I can do just your a text uh, test. Uh, Selecting English contact next. Okay, so I'm going to select FCT and a random grant. I'm not going to fill in right now the the mandatory uh, only the mandatory uh, questions. So here, when you go to dataset info you are able to select uh, the template that you want to use to describe uh, your data set. So if you select FCT, you'll have here the, the two templates that I referred. So you have the model in Portuguese that I believe it's not <laughs> something that you would like to use, but you have here the FCT template in English. So if you select it, I will do save my data set, okay, manually. Again, I'm going to put test. We confirm again here the, the template. So we are already in this um, yellow area. So it's concerning data set. So it's where you can check our template. So right now, as you can see here in the index, you'll see the six topics. So data information, documentation, storage, personal data, data sharing, and finally the responsibilities and resources. So when you uh, choose next, you will access the, the template. So right now in the index, you'll see each of the questions for each topic. So the questions that start uh, by one are related with uh, the topic one. So you can see all uh, the questions. If you go down, you can see the entire template and you can see um, what uh, we, we mentioned in terms of uh, uh, the analysis that we perform in order to select the type of answers that we would have. You can see here some of the questions that we consider that are related, for instance, with uh, the, the RDA uh, common standards. You can see, uh, for instance, I'm going to show you in terms of metadata. For instance, if you select yes, you can select from an API the list, for instance, the standards of metadata. And you have near each question the, the guidance that we refer. So the, the person that is filling in the, the information 
yes, also some some guidance and some additional information in order to respond to the, the questions. I don't know if uh, I, I helped you with this uh, demonstration. Yes, yes. Thank yes. you very much. Okay. I was. Um, is it possible to find this these questions in in a PDF or or? Yes, is... you can. Uh, you can export the 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 template. So you okay. can. Uh, you can. I'm going just to. To save as it is. I'm going to my data sets, and it's in draft. So okay. if I open it. Then you have here the option okay. of export, and mm -hmm. you have several formats. So you can do it like in PDF, and you can check. Uh, this is obviously going to be very incomplete, but uh, mm -hmm. you'll have the, the the version downloaded. Okay. Thank you very much. No, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. There is another. Uh, well, there are two more questions. So one mm -hmm. is by Salima. Uh, as Salima, Philippa was yeah. saying, I just would like to add the importance of the involvement of the research support staff, librarians, research administrators, etc., mm -hmm. IT team, ethics committee, legal staff, etc., in the process. Some questions of the DMP are very technical, and this support is very important. I think that's more of a statement than uh, a question. Yes. So Salima is, uh, is uh, actually working with us. He's a very active member of our research data forum and uh, is also participating in the, the pilot phase for the repository. So Salima was involved in the preparation of the, the DMP of our institution and project. So she is very well aware of all these, <laughs> of these questions. I see. Uh, well, well uh, thank you for uh, also your uh, contribution, uh, Salima. Um, Yeni has another question. Does the template support specification of different phases in the project, defining question as irrelevant in the planning phase, the active phase, etc.? Is this technically possible in Argos? Uh, I think this is for me. <laughs> and uh, just for you to know, we are uh, going to launch a new if we, we are doing some big changes at the moment uh, in the front end for researchers. So the workflows that you saw today, for example, uh, that Philippe um, uh, just demonstrated a few minutes before, uh, are going to be enhanced. And inside, well, with new functionalities and with new uh, types of information, new fields, one of them will be this one to specify the different uh, phase of the project. So it's not at the moment, it's, uh, so it's one of the big uh, release that we are launching uh, this uh, after summer, mm -hmm. so hopefully September. Yeah, in that uh, case, I just would like to, to add that uh, we also had that challenge and uh, the way uh, that we tried to manage the situation was in fact to select some uh, specific questions with uh, as no mandatory because we know that at the beginning of the project probably some questions were going to be difficult to to answer so we leave them as no mandatory but uh, we are going to request and uh, it's also uh, we know that DMP it's not a statical uh, document you need to update it from time to time and when, whenever you have an important change. So uh, according to these phases, uh, it is expected that the research and uh, their team will be able to update some of this information. But it's good to, to have this information also from Ellie because it, it's in fact very important, yeah. Yes, yes, we, we agree. We've received this, this request and uh, we're already working on that. Thank you, thank you for, for, um, for this question again. Um, other questions from colleagues? Um, anything for discussion? 
related to this template. Well, if not, then Philippa, we thank you very much no, uh, for I, joining us Thank today. you for the invitation and I hope it was useful. And again, if any of the participants wants to clarify something or share some experience, feel free, please. Yes. Thank you very much, everyone. And we'll, um, of course, we're available offline, but we will tune in again uh, next month, uh, the last, um, um, last Wednesday of the month. Thank you. Bye. Have